Hi everybody, welcome to another tutorial on Beep Strip Drumbo, the modular groove box. In this video, I would like to show you how you can use the envelope follower. And I'm going to start with a little bit of theory, how that works, and then we move very quickly to a number of examples. So let's um, um, start adding a flexi sampler, and let's start adding to that flexi sampler a song. In this case, a song I previously composed. And then let's also add under utility the envelope follower. The envelope follower takes an input and uh, based on the amplitude of that input uh, generates a signal. And that signal um, amplitude is dependent on the levels that you have from the amplitude from the input, uh, input signal. If you want the detection of uh, um, of the input signal to be, um, I would say, uh, very quick. You set the attack um, to um, to a minimum. If you want to uh, the envelope follower to have to be less sensitive to variation of the input signal, then you increase you, you increase the attack. Then additionally, if you want also that um, uh, there is a smoother, um, if you like. Um, uh, movement or transition between the variation or from the input signal to the next variation that are detected, then you increase the decay. And of course you have a button here which allows you to set the amount um, of the output signal. So let's have a look. For the purpose of seeing what the envelope following does, let's also add an oscilloscope. So here we go. On the utility we have an oscilloscope now let's make uh, sure the connection are correct so the um so the envelope follower takes the input from the flexi sampler and the oscilloscope takes the input not from the flexi sampler but from the envelope follower follower now i'm going to set the volume then to zero from the master here and uh, i'm going to click the pad which will uh, then set them in the signal which will uh, trigger the flexi sampler. Here we go. So let's now change the X scale. As you can see, you can see the uh, signal outputted from the envelope follower. So, and actually, let's add uh, a, another oscilloscope here. And um, let's ensure that it is connected to the flexi sampler. So, as you can see, when the amplitude go up, and this oscilloscope shows you directly the output from the flexi sampler, there is a correspondence um, increase on the output from the envelope follower, which is taking the amplitude signal from the flexi sampler. If I increase the attack, you can see um, that the envelope follower becomes less sensitive to the changes uh, of the flexi sampler here, which again you can see on the oscilloscope number two. And if I increase the decay, look, it becomes, again, even smoother in terms of transition to the next variation of output. And you can see that because as if I decrease it, it becomes fuzzier, see, more distorted, because it will pick up more. Now, why is this uh, important? How can you use the envelope follower? Well, let me show you quickly an, an example. So let's remove the oscilloscope. And let's add the filter. For example, just a normal filter. Let's ensure that filter is connected to the flexi sampler. And now let's um, click on the cutoff and let's modulate the cutoff from the envelope follower. So in other words, the um, uh, the cutoff is modulated by the envelope follower which is following, of course, the amplitude variations from the flexi sampler. So if the amplitude will, is going up from the uh, flexi sampler, then the, um, and will increase here the intensity, then the cutoff will, uh, dial will move up. Okay. And um, therefore you can apply filter effects based on level of amplitude. So let's um, here, uh, let's see what it sounds like with the um, envelope fuller applied. <clears throat> Don't 
double click on play and then stop here to stop the flexi uh, sampler from playing. As you can hear, the filter in cutoff is changing based on the amplitude on the flexi sampler. Of course, if you have drums instrument in the waveform, that will have an impact in terms of, of how the output signal uh, will be influenced. Uh, okay, so that bear that in mind. And you can use that actually to your advantage, for example, to detect a variation based on drum, on drums playing. Another example uh, would be to create an instrument that um, uh, which the filter of is following practically the, um, the envelope of um, the incoming waveform, like in this case. So let's see if we can apply that. First of all, let's um, add under utility a trigger button. And let's connect um, the trigger to the the um, the gate symbol, uh, the gate um, signal to the trigger event. Also, let's double click on the pitch signal connection and disconnect it. I'm doing this because I want the flexi simpler to be triggered by the trigger button and not to be triggered or influenced anymore by the pads that I'm playing here or by the keys. Okay. As you can see, nothing is happening, but if I trigger, if I click on the button, okay. Next, um, let's remove the filter for now. Let's leave the envelope follower there. Actually, what I'm going to do is to add another filter here. And the reason I'm doing this is, and I'm connecting it to the flexi sampler, and then I'm taking the input uh, for the envelope follower, not from the flexi sampler, but from the filter. And I'm doing this because um, having a cutoff set to lower, it will remove some of the uh, high frequencies, which helps to get a better signal detection in the envelope follower. Then next, um, let me add um, an instrument from an instrument rack. Let's choose a combo lead. And let's ensure that um, the um, the uh, gate uh, signal is coming not from the trigger button but from the MIDI to CV so that we can play naturally that uh, instrument rack then let's add a filter which will be driven by that combo uh, lead instrument then let's set the cutoff to be modulated by the envelope follower like so. And let's increase and the intensity on the envelope follower on the cutoff. And um, finally, because we have two types of sound sources, let's also add a mixer, like so. And let's connect the mixer to uh, the filter two, which is outputting what is coming from the instrument rack, comb lead. And also let's um, add the um, the flexi sampler. Okay, so let's recap. We have a trigger button here, which is triggering the flexi sampler. The flexi sampler output is going through a filter to remove some of the frequencies, and then it's going inside an envelope follower. The envelope follower will detect uh, differences in amplitude, will generate a signal, which is then modulating the cutoff of this filter tube, which is filtering the output from the comb lead um, instrument rack and um, both the filter one and filter two uh, are going into a mixer so that you can hear both the instrument and also the flexi simpler the waveform or the song being played let's decrease also a little bit of volume on the flexi simpler um, so now um, i'm going to play on the keyboard and what you will hear is as the song play and you will hear and uh, variation on the filter for that instrument which will correspond to what the, fl the envelope follower is detecting on the waveform okay right let's um, go Thank you. 
So as you can hear, the comb lead um, is um, filter applied to the comb lead, which is filter number two. Cutoff of that filter is modulated by the um, envelope follower, uh, as, I, as we just mentioned a moment ago. And it is, um, which is taking, of course, the um, input from the from the sound signal. So as you can see, a very interesting uh, example of how you can use the envelope follower to generate really um, what you really need. Of course, there are other use, case, other use cases that you can use. For example, you could actually have an input signal, which is your uh, drum uh, bit. And um, you may want to use that drum bit as a same side chain effect into another waveform or instrument and so on and so forth. So the combination are unlimited. I hope you enjoyed, you found this useful and see you next time. Bye.